Hey there, Math 237 students. My name is Zach and I'm one of your four instructors this term. In this video, I'm going to be talking about one of the questions on your first written assignment, specifically Skill Builders 1. In this question, we are being asked to match the level curves shown down here on the left to their functions which are shown on the right. Now my plan for this video is to give you an idea of how I might approach such a problem, and hopefully it'll give you some good ideas for when you go to solve this one yourself. This discussion will also be helpful for question two. Okay, so how do we start a problem like this? Well, in any math problem, it's always important to know what exactly you're being asked to do. So a good starting place is to review any definitions that might appear in the problem. For example, in linear algebra, if you're being asked a question about eigenvalues, you probably want to start by knowing what exactly an eigenvalue is. In our question, we are being asked about level curves. So let's start by reminding ourselves what exactly a level curve is. The idea behind a level curve is that we have some function z equals f of x, y. In this case, I have x squared plus y squared. A level curve is what you get by slicing this function at various heights, z equals k. You can see that in this case, we're going to get a collection of concentric circles, a bunch of circles that have center 0, 0. So my contour plot, the plot of my level curves, looks something like this. Now, in this problem, we're not actually given the graph of the 3D function. We're just given the equation. Fortunately, however, we often don't need the graph to find the level curves. We can do all this algebraically. So starting with the equation z equals x squared plus y squared and setting z equal to k, we get the equation x squared plus y squared equals k. Now, for k values greater than or equal to zero, this gives us the equation of a circle, a circle centered at the origin with radius root k. So for instance, when k is zero, we get just a point. When k is one, we get a circle of radius one, and so on. And there you have it. We've matched this equation to a collection of level curves. In our last example, we were able to recognize our level curves as a collection of circles centered at the origin. Now, this is pretty typical. There are lots of familiar surfaces that will have circular level curves, like cones, spheres, and paraboloids. But of course, there are many other common curves that you'll encounter when solving these types of problems. On this slide, I'm going to tell you about four of them, called conic sections. It's important that you're able to recognize the conic section when you encounter its equation. Back in high school, you probably spent lots of time talking about circles and parabolas. So I'm not going to get into too much detail about these conic sections. Instead, I'm going to tell you about two other conics that you may have not seen in the past, but that show up pretty often when solving these types of problems. The first of these conic sections is an ellipse. The equation of an ellipse is x over a squared plus y over b squared is equal to 1, where here a and b are some non-zero constants. If a and b happen to be the same, then by multiplying both sides of this equation by a squared, you actually get this equation over here, and your ellipse is a circle. If instead a is bigger than b, your ellipse is going to be longer in the x direction. If b is bigger than a, your ellipse will be longer in the y direction. You can also have cross terms in this equation, like x times y. That might be an indication that your ellipse has been rotated, and these are quite a bit harder to graph. But fortunately, in this question, you're not asked to graph anything just match. Our last conic section is a hyperbola. The equation is similar to an ellipse, except now we have a minus sign attached to one of the variables. If the minus sign is attached to the y term like it is here, then our hyperbola is going to open up in the x direction. If instead the minus sign were attached to the x term, then our hyperbola would be opening up in the y direction. In many cases, you won't be able to recognize your level curve as a conic section at all. Take, for example, this crazy function. The level curve is k equals x squared y minus 2xy plus y. And I have no idea what that looks like. Now, it might sound simple, but it's really helpful if you can rearrange an expression like this to write y as a function of x. After all, that's typically how we think of curves in R2. In this case, we can factor out a y term from the right-hand side to get k equals y times x squared minus 2x plus 1. If I divide both sides by the x expression, I get y equals k over x squared minus 2x plus 1. And in fact, this can be factored. y equals k over x minus 1 squared. Now that looks quite a bit nicer, doesn't it? 
I don't know exactly what this curve will look like, but it sure does remind me a lot of the function y equals k over x. When k is positive, this is going to be a collection of hyperbolas in quadrants 1 and 3. It might look something like this. When k is negative, they're going to move to quadrants 2 and 4. So we get a collection of these hyperbolas. Now, of course, in our case, our level curves have been shifted by one unit, and the denominator has been squared. Think about how these transformations might affect the graph that you see here. Another important strategy for matching functions to level curves is to look for any key features in your contour plots. For example, I've included three of the more complicated contour plots from our first slide. We're going to look for key features that might help us to match them to functions. In this first one, the thing that stands out to me is the periodic behavior of my level curves. Perhaps there's some periodicity here that might be suggestive of a sine or a cosine function. In our second contour plot, there are several features that are standing out to me. First of all, it looks like we're going to be dealing with some kind of a hyperbola, right? But the thing that really gets my attention are the asymptotes. Looks like we have two vertical asymptotes and a horizontal asymptote. So we're looking for a function whose level curves give rise to horizontal and vertical asymptotes. See if you can find it on the first slide. The third contour plot might be the most complicated. I think this one sort of looks like an onion, don't you? The thing that stands out to me, actually, is this straight line that goes right through the center, the line y equals x. Does one of our functions from the first slide have y equals x as one of its level curves? That might be a good candidate for matching with this third graph. Finally, it's entirely possible that you encounter a function that's a little bit too complicated to recognize its level curves easily. In that case, graphing software can be very helpful to you. Take, for example, this function, fxy equals y cubed plus x squared. My strategy for understanding the level curves of this function would be to first set z equal to k, and then try to rewrite this with y as a function of x. If you do that, you're going to get that y is the cube root of k minus x squared. And I don't really have a good sense of what those level curves would look like. So I decided to ask the computer for help. My software of choice is Maple. That's how I generated these images here. But there's lots of other free software that's available, such as Desmos or GeoGebra. In my case, Maple has created some really nice 3D images of my surface. And I even get this top-down view where I'm able to see the level curves. Now it's important that you don't rely too heavily on the use of a computer, because being able to graph and recognize curved surfaces in R3 is one of the goals of Math 237. Of course, there are some pretty nasty surfaces that exist out in the wild, so sometimes using a computer really is the best approach. Anyway folks, this is all I have for you for this video. Go back to the first slide and see if you can use these techniques to match the level curves to the functions provided.